Morning chores. Earlier in 2022, five highly accomplished judges selected by Professional Photographers of Canada, which is also known as PPOC, studied this image along with several others in a national competition. And they awarded this image a merit. It was a judge's choice and it was the best in its class in editorial. Besides that, it was inducted into the Lone Collection, which is a selection of 40 of the best images uh, among the competitions. Now, the storytelling element in this image is so powerful. It almost has a timeless classic feel to it. The color harmony is amazing and the poses of the two girls is so natural. They're so comfortable um, milking a cow. Their attire is very apt and the icing on the cake is the eye contact the cow is making with a little bit of um, food. I'm not sure what that food is, but uh, on its mouth. So that really completes the image. Now I am Manpreet, a professional photographer and a retoucher and your host today. And we are going to speak with the creator of this image to find out what went into its creation. So all the way from Killarney, Manitoba, Welcome, Jamie Knight. Hello, thank you for having me. Now, Jamie is a nationally accredited and family and pet photographer. And correct me if I'm wrong, Killarney, Manitoba is quite different from the Killarney Provincial Park that we all know about. Yes. That's in all the way in Ontario. <laughs> quite different. <laughs> quite different. So, Jamie, tell us about yourself and how it is that you got interested in photography? Um, so I am a wife and mother, and we homeschool our girls, and we live on a little hobby farm in just outside of Killarney. And um, I've been involved in dogs for, for years, and I traveled to dog shows with client dogs, and I needed to send photos home to my clients, but all I had was a little flip phone which took blurry photos and you couldn't tell what was what. So I went into a, I think it was a Black's camera store and told them I needed a camera that would take nice pictures. And there was a Nikon D7000 and I bought that and I started taking it with me all over North America, taking pictures of my dog, of the client dogs and would put them onto a laptop and send them home and Clients thought it was fantastic, and I started going, well, you know, this is really fun. I like taking photos. So I started looking on the Internet and learning more and learning different things to do and started, uh, yes, just started trying to get an education in photography at the time, living in the little, little tiny middle of nowhere town. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how I got my start into photos. <laughs> But what a beautiful way to bring up kids living on a farm. Uh, not, too, not too many families have that option now. No, no, it's really nice. Yeah. Now, this gorgeous image, this beautiful image, what was its inspiration? Um, so that's Bambi. She's one of our milk cows. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. we do once a day milking and it's in the morning. And I'm normally up before the sun rises, making sure everyone's got food and water. And then I start milking and I usually start milking in the dark. And by the time, well, I start milking in, I guess the dawn and it's just starting to get light. And then by the time I'm done milking, it's, you know, a nice, beautiful sunrise, full blown. Mm -hmm. And as I'm out there milking and, you know, I've got my head resting on the cow and I was just thinking what a nice, kind of a serene photo it would be if someone milking and given that's what I do so regularly I I wanted to figure out how to get that kind of photo but I also figured the effort of setting up the tripod and trying to get the cow to look the right way and me to look the right way wasn't going to work very well doing it myself and I have 
two older girls there who absolutely adore having their photo taken. So I broached the idea of, do you guys want to take a photo of you, you know, milking Bambi and someone holding her while she's eating her grain? And they were like, yes. And I was like, it's going to be really early in the morning. Is it still okay? Yes. All right. So, <laughs> so yeah, then it was a basically just waiting for the right sunrise kept going out and I wanted a sunrise where everything was nice and pink and it would give a, you know, a nice beautiful look to the photos. So one morning we got the right photo, the right sunrise. So I went inside and I woke the girls up and told them to get into their dresses and out we went. Wow. Well, poor things had to get up really early that morning. <laughs> they did. <laughs> But they seem very comfortable with the cow, right? Yes. They, they, they help you out they, in the milking? Yeah. Um, they haven't quite learned how to milk yet, but they have learned they will move the cows around from one pasture to another. Um, Jersey cows are known for being very, very docile and very sweet. And they know the girls will have treats for them, so they're quite happy to do whatever the girls ask. Yeah. No, if if the um, I guess a person is is uh, comfortable, generally animals can sense it. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was your setup for this in in terms of gear? Did you use a tripod? What camera lens? Did you use reflectors? Did you use external lights or just natural light? Yeah. So this is just natural light, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a tripod. And I didn't have a reflector because I always forget to bring those things home with me. Um, so it was just my camera, which I shoot with a Nikon D800 or D810. Mm -hmm. And it was a, an 85 millimeter lens. And yeah, so we just we went out and we waited for the light to get set up nicely and gave Bambi her grain so she'd be pretty content to, to eat. and. Then I started taking some photos and I was making hilarious noises to try and get the cow to look at me because I've never actually worked with a cow quite this way. And if I was calling her name, she wasn't making eye contact because she was busy shoving her, her face into her bucket of oats. So I ended up mooing and barking and then she, she looked over and yeah. Nice. So I, yeah. I really need to keep a reflector like in the car at, at home, but... Mm -hmm. One step at a time. <laughs> One step at a time, yes. But the 810 and the 85 is a, is a really great combination. Yeah, I, I like them. <laughs> Were you on a tripod? Nope. Uh, I was moving okay. around to see which angle I preferred. So uh -huh. I know I can pick up the tripod and the camera, but again, I never remember yeah. these things. Everything is at my studio <laughs> in Killarney, and I definitely didn't want to get up and drive there first before taking the photo. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and I guess um, getting it on a tripod would have slowed you down a bit. Probably. In terms of yeah. trying to get the expressions and, and things like that. Yeah, so walk us through the process. What did you, um, after taking these images, you bring them into um, Lightroom? Do you use Lightroom? Yeah, I brought them into Lightroom and did a quick mm -hmm. kind of cull of which ones I wanted to keep and... This was the one, the only one that I ended up working on just because I liked the fact that Bambi was looking at the camera and there was really nice eye contact. And so then I do a quick edit in Lightroom and then I pulled it over into Photoshop and I did a little bit more in there. And then, okay. so yeah. Were there a lot of images that you had to cull through? Or, um, I uh... think there were... Probably, I think it was under 20. I didn't take too, too many. At that point, she was already done her grain and she wanted to get back to the, the herd of cows who were going to go out and eat for the day. So it was kind of a, mm -hmm. a time sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, did you do a lot in uh, Lightroom or Not was it just uh, opening up the shadows and, you know, yeah. things like that? Yeah. Um, okay. I do most of my stuff in Photoshop. I just kind of do a quick general one in, in Lightroom and then I go a little more in depth in Photoshop. Um, so walk us through your Photoshop um, process that you went to take this image from um, how it came from Lightroom till the finished image that you submitted for competition. Yeah, so when I brought it into Lightroom, I took a brush and I lightened Bambi up so 
I made her quite a bit lighter. I accentuated the highlights on the, my middle daughter who's holding Bambi. Um, uh -huh. she had a, did you use curves for that? Uh, yeah, I used curves for that. And then I believe I took the tag on her ear out just because I didn't. Okay. Um, you have to have cattle tags, so it has to be there. But I always prefer photos without tags in their ears because it yes. looks nicer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and then there were some distracting elements um, in the grass, and there was a fence behind. So I played around there, and then I corrected my horizon line in Photoshop because mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention to it as well as I should have been while I was shooting it. <laughs> Too busy yeah. mooing at the cow. So, <laughs> so no, it's 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 the final image that matters. Yeah, exactly. So. So that was your final image. It was cropped in a little bit. Yeah. And um, when you submitted it, you put a brown, dark brown matte to it. Now, did you do any um, color toning to this? Because it does seem to have almost like a sepia um, overtone to it. Nope. Just, just the stuff that I did playing with curves. I didn't. And as I said, I used a brush on Bambi the cow herself just to lighten her up a little bit. That's why they call this uh, the golden hour. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. That's what that was one of the main reasons. And honestly, I I prefer I think sunrise light um, to sunset light. But most clients don't want to <laughs> get up at you know six o'clock in the morning or in the summer five o'clock in the morning for, yes. for it. <laughs> well, sunrise generally the air is clearer. Yeah, and if you're shooting ever shooting ponds or lakes, they are you know, more still. Yeah. You know, so uh, sunrise is really a beautiful time, except you to get up, go, you know, <laughs> trudge in, in the dark. Yeah. Uh, to wherever you are you're shooting. Thankfully, this is so, right close to our house. So the girls, uh -huh. after they took the photo, they just crawled back into bed and went back to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, uh, did you do anything um, special when you submitted this to the competition? Did you uh, have to go through, um, you know, uh, a process? When I first submitted it, I entered it in our regionals last year, so 2021 20, okay. regionals. And mm -hmm. I hadn't done as much to it as I did um, to get the final final image. Um, and I think it scored and accepted. There were no real comments on it. It was just, you know, there it was. And I was like, okay, I was, that was my first time entering regionals as an accredited photographer. So I was still pretty happy with that. And then because I'm a procrastinator, it was like the week before nationals, I decided I should figure out what photos I'm going to enter. And um, one of, uh, my photographer friends here, who's Becky Fleury, she had offered her help looking over images. So I sent her the images and she kind of told me what she thinks would help the image. So I was going back and forth and doing little tweaks here and there and sending it to her. And I think I ended up entering my images, you know, like an hour before the closing dates. So <laughs> or the closing hours. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, with Becky's help, she, she has such an eye for it that she was able to kind of catch little things that as someone who's never entered a national competition, I had no idea what I was looking, you know, what I was needing to do. So it was really nice to have her take me under her wing and, and kind of give me a, a helping hand. Nice. But. No, Be Becky Fleury is, uh, she's a wonderful person. She is. In fact, I'm so excited I'm going to be interviewing her this week. Excellent, uh, I can't so wait. <laughs> looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. So, um, when was it that you joined uh, the Professional Photographers of Canada, PPOC? Um, the first time I joined in 2012. And mm -hmm. I had a couple friends who were photographers and they were also in the dog world and they were members. So I thought, well, this would be a good idea. And so I joined and no one reached out to me and I never reached out to them. And it's not like there was a bunch of online stuff cause that wasn't really a thing in 2012. So I didn't make it into any meetings or any meetups. 
I paid my dues for the year and then I went, well, that was a big waste. Like, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> but in all fairness, I put nothing into it. So, I mean, I got what I put into it. Nothing. And so then in 2018, I went to a Prairie Creatives workshop put on by the PPOC of Manitoba. And I went and it was fantastic. Um, it was amazing listening to the speakers and I met so many super nice PPOC members who were excited that there was, you know, someone new that they hadn't met and they were all very welcoming and telling me that I should join. And I was like, okay, well, you know, now that I've put some names to faces, I'll try. So I joined and I've put so much more effort into it and I've received so much more out of it and I've made friendships and I've, you know, I've been mentored by people and yeah, just night and day, the effort that I put in this time has been equally matched by the PPOC members putting the same effort back into me. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate that a lot of people join associations all over the world, but uh, do not take advantage of the yeah. association. Uh, it's it's like a little bit of effort and the returns are phenomenal. Yeah. Right? For sure. There are some incredible photographers in uh, in the in PPOC. Yeah. And yeah. they're all so willing to, to help out. Like um, when I was going for my one of my accreditations earlier this year, I contacted mm -hmm. Bruce Hendricks and mm -hmm. he phoned me up and we were on the phone for like two hours and going over my images and you know this and that and it was just it was so nice like I he's an amazing photographer and I mean it was just so nice to have him kind helping me out and I, he hasn't met me before like we've talked on the phone a couple of times and we've been to you know the same online stuff but it's not like mm -hmm. he knows me and it was just so nice to see him being so willing to help someone else out to, to help them succeed. Yeah, now think about that. Uh, Bruce Hendricks, besides being a wonderful all-around guy, is an incredible photographer. His light painting oh. of uh, images is out of this world. Yeah. I have interviewed him, um, you know, check out his, his YouTube uh, uh, conversation. But uh, he was recently the judge at the Ontario Regionals and uh, also I think one of his images just uh, yesterday I was looking got an award for in PPA which is Professional Photographers of America. Oh, so yeah. that's quite an accomplishment. It is. And outside of an association if one was to get the time of such an accomplished person how much do you think that would cost or in terms of even even if it was possible right so the value that you get here is absolutely amazing yeah yeah i can't you know, imagine most other organizations just giving up their their time like that <laughs> yeah no I've, I've heard of ppa uh photographers and ppoc which is professional photographers of america and uh canada you know uh going out taking their time to help somebody for no return or no incentive, Yeah, you know, just because they want to share. Now, a new photographer who's just starting out, okay, um, because it was not long back that you were starting out. What advice would you give them? How can they improve uh, their craft? Join the PPOC if you're in Canada, um, get a mentor and go to all the events that you can, like do the online events, go to the in-person events, get out there and meet your fellow members and you're going to find that they're going to be so happy to help you. Like I've talked to members from the PPOC all over Canada. Like when I was going for another accreditation, I contacted one uh, in BC and uh, with Terrell and Terrell was so happy to, to help me and go over images and um, yeah, so join, put your, you know, put effort into it 
you're gonna you're gonna see so much effort back from from the, the other members and get yourself a mentor and don't be afraid to have your work critiqued I know it sounds scary to you know put your work out there and have someone pick apart things that you need to improve on but that's how you're gonna get better that's how when you're out shooting you're gonna go oh you know what I need to shoot a little bit differently so I don't have you know X problem so yeah get out there get a mentor join the PPOC get your work critiqued and just keep practicing yeah yeah and Terrell is an amazing person too. Uh, she was also the, uh, one of the judges for the yeah. uh, uh, Ontario um, competition. And in fact, she's helped me as well for, for my uh, submissions. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, I know that, at least for me, and I'm assuming it'll be similar for you, uh, entering these competitions, getting your feedback from them, improving to um, you know get your score up this improvement it translates into professional work and you do professional work as well right yeah. now, have you noticed that you know uh, the feedback that you get the critique that you get from PPOC uh, or for image competitions or accreditations um, that has helped improve your photography professionally yes absolutely and besides that, I think uh, it it gives a lot of credibility when clients, you know, realize that you have um, been awarded for a competition. And um, I think we, we you also get a press release, right? Yeah, we get a press release and our local paper is fantastic about you get like a nice big page couple like big page spread that has some of your photos in it as well as a like a little article like a write up on it. And yeah, and it's because of that. People will see it in the newspaper and then they come into the studio and they meet me and, you know, then they take a business card and we set something up for the future. And whether it's family photos or the other day I was taking photos of two older dogs and they're both, you know, nearing the end of their life. But uh, he wanted to get really nice photos of them instead of just his little, you know, iPhone photos. Yeah. And so we went out and we shot and he's now ordered like a 40 by 60 canvas of these two beautiful old dogs with this gorgeous sunset behind them and and the only reason he found me is because he saw my name in the newspaper and he went oh and then he read and yeah so it's done wonders for both you know my skill and for bringing clients to me customers to me so yes I think I think it also um, fills customers with pride when they see the image you have taken for them and they can show it to their friends, family, that this is an award-winning photographer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, where can uh, our viewers or people who want to reach you uh, for work or see your work and follow you, where can they reach you? Um, I'm just busy finishing up my website so once that's all done i'll get that sent to you but for now you can mm -hmm. find me on facebook as jamie knight photography okay i'll put that link uh in the show notes as well Perfect. um so it's been amazing jamie talking with you there is so much information to to gain from your experience your knowledge and, and how you've created this amazing image. Um, I thank you so much for, for coming for, to this conversation. Thank you for having me on your show and thank you for doing the show. It's so nice to watch. <laughs> yes. Well, um, this is a channel where we uh, get all kinds of genres of photography. We have conversations with photographers and get to know um, how they created their award-winning images. So if you're interested in, um, in you know, getting to know behind the scenes and the creation process, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like this video. Thank you.